started on this project, you need to round up a few things. First of all, you'll need a sewing machine. You'll need some thread, some scissors, that sort of st basic sewing supplies. The next thing you'll need is to pick out some sort of fabric. I am using today vintage sheets. I'm going to use this for one side. It's a very pretty floral in blue. And then for the other side, I'm going to use this fabric right here. And then I believe I will make the binding out of this one also because I'll have extra. So those are the two fabrics for the top piece of the, of the quilt and the bottom piece of the quilt. And then of course you'll need some sort of quilt batting. I'm going to use this Nature's Touch 100% cotton batting. And it's real thin like this. I like, I've just started using this as opposed to like the webbing kind. I like this much better. And then, and then when you, when you start to put the, um, sew all the layers together, one thing that would make things really easy is if you had a walking foot like this. If you don't know what a walking foot is, it basically moves all three layers of your fabric at once instead of like a traditional um, sewing foot which moves the bottom layer so you don't get a lot of bunching and stuff like this. This thing has saved, <laughs> has changed my whole sewing life once I had this thing. So if you don't have one of these, it is a very good investment. And I have a Kenmore sewing machine and it came in a box of a whole bunch of different other types of specialty foots. And I think it was, it was under a hundred dollars. I want to say it was even a hundred, um, below like $50 or something like that. So definitely worth your investment if you're going to be quilting at all or sewing multiple layers together for your sewing project. So get one of these if you can. Another thing you're going to want is safety pins. I have these quilter safety pins. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it has a little bend in them. So make it easier when you're trying to put the, all the layers together. I don't know why this simple little bend in the safety pin makes such a big difference, but it does. So these things are amazing. If you don't happen to have any of these ones, uh, the quilting safety pins, you can take normal ba safety pins and just bend them a little bit and that works just fine too. So you might want to get some of these. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is take your top fabric, and this is the fabric I'll be using, and you're going to want to cut this to size. This sheet is actually a double size, so I'm going to cut it down to a single size. We'll cut this to size, and then we'll layer all the, all the layers together. And I'll show you that, of course. But basically, you get your three fabrics, you layer them together, you pin them together, and then you sew them together. So I'll walk you through the steps super quick and super simple. Okay, so I have gone ahead and laid out my fabric on the floor nice and flat and I have layered all three layers together. I laid it face down so that this is the back side is up. Then I added the batting and then I added the top piece of fabric right side up. Laid everything out nice and smooth, got all the wrinkles out that I could. And then the next thing I did was take my safety pins, like there, and I added a safety pin about every 12 inches all the way around the quilt. That will keep it all in place and make sure that it doesn't shift around. The next thing I did was go, went ahead and drew with my ruler some stitching lines. If you can see that right there. I've never done this before because normally when I do quilts, I have a a piece quilt where I've got lines where I can already follow. So this is new for me. We'll see how it works out. So I made a line every 12 inches here all the way across the fabric from one side to the other, the narrow side to narrow side. See? I then, I made another line over here the lengthwise from the top of the blanket to the bottom of the blanket. And that I used a measurement of from the edge, I went in 16 inches, and then I made my line right there. And then I did the same thing on the other side. So I'll have two lines going from top to bottom across the quilt. I just eyeballed everything. I really didn't measure much out. But basically all I did was take my ruler like this, 
and I laid it down on the fabric. I tried to make it nice and straight. Once again, just eyeballing it. And then I took my pencil and I basically just drew a line down the fabric. So then I have a line that looks like that. And that'll be my sewing guide for when I go to sew all the layers together. Which is, by the way, the next step. So I will bring this over to the sewing machine and we'll get started sewing all the layers together. Alright, so I am ready to start sewing and I have installed the walking foot right here. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but the walking foot is on and I have my thread threaded and I am ready to go. Alright, so I am ready to start sewing. I have my sewing machine set up with the walking foot on it and I thought I would show you how I start sewing the quilt. I always start at the middle section. You can see here I've got my line drawn here and what I do is I roll up the fabric starting on the at one side, roll it up until I'm almost to the, where I want to sew. And then I do the same thing on the other. So then I have like these two rolls to hang on to and it fits into the sewing machine really nicely. I'm not sure if this is how everyone does it, but this seems to work really well for me. So this is how I have been doing it lately. So basically what I'm going to do is take this over to the sewing machine and just sew down the line that I have drawn. And then when I'm done with this one, I'll unroll this side, roll this side up until I come to the next line and then work my way down the quilt. Okay, so I have sewn together all the layers. You can see here I've got my sewing lines. And I have made the quilt. You can see the sewing lines across and up and down. So now the next part is to go ahead and trim off all the excess. I have excess fabric here that I'm going to trim. like that all the way around so then I have a nice clean edge so we've got the top fabric here the batting and the bottom fabric so it looks like this on the back so all the way around we're going to do the same thing and then we'll go on to the next step now it is time to add the binding and to make the binding I used the leftover fabric I had from the top sheet I cut it into one and a half inch strips and then I pressed them in half like this so now all I need to do is add it to the edge of my, I'll lay it on top of the quilt and I'll sew down this raw edge so that it can be flipped over to the opposite side and hand sewn on. So that is what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I have finished sewing on the binding as you can see here. Here's the binding and here's the stitching line. I've done it all the way around the quilt. So now all I need to do is fold it over and tuck it to the other side like this. And then I'll hand sew along this edge right here and I'll be done with the quilt. This is actually the hand sewing part of the quilt. It's my favorite part of the quilt. I don't know what it is, but I find hand sewing very, very relaxing. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'll go ahead and pin all this all the way around and then sit down, watch my favorite TV show and hand sew away. You, so I was looking at the quilt now that I'm hand sewing it and I found this little hole. Didn't even notice it the whole time I was sewing the quilt. It is a vintage sheet so I guess you can't expect it to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is find a little bit of this fabric, this color fabric and make a little patch to sew on there. So I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, so I have finished the patch for the hole on this quilt that I showed you earlier. I just made a simple heart shape. I didn't know what to do. And then I just zigzagged around it as you can see here. So that takes care of the hole that I had. And I have gone ahead and pinned, oops, it's getting stuck. I've gone around and 
pinned the whole outside of the quilt binding. So now I am ready to start hand sewing. Woohoo! So I'm in my bedroom here and you can see I have a little Shelby girl is looking out the window. Hopefully she won't bark while I'm going through this. But I have finished the quilt that I made out of the vintage sheets and I think it turned out awesome. I have it as just an extra little pop of color at the end of the bed and I think it looks really pretty. I think using the two different sheets was a really fun idea. So you got the top and you got the backing and then there's the little patch that I made. And oh, Shelby Girl approves. Oh, look at yeah, see, see how cozy it is. So, anyways, I think this is a really good way to use vintage sheets. And I have always thought that when I make blankets like this or quilts like this, that they are my favorite because they're so cozy and the fabric is so soft and like I don't know something about vintage sheets. They just have a different feel, and I think they make perfect quilts. So. There is the finished product, and Shelby Girl is getting very cozy, aren't you? Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.